Welcome to another edition of McAllen Update. I'm Roy Cantu. And I'm Roxanne Lerma. Today we are at McAllen Veterans Memorial Stadium, soon to be the site of our amazing McAllen Holiday Parade presented by La Plaza Mall. Join us Saturday, December 3rd for the most spectacular parade in South Texas, featuring more than 40 exciting floats, animated bands, and 36 enormous helium balloons. It's the largest illuminated parade in Texas. Now remember, this is a big city event. So bring comfortable shoes and attire to make the trek to the parade route. We're offering free parking, so take advantage of the Polar Express shuttle. The city of McAllen, in partnership with STC, will again provide a free park and ride Polar Express shuttle service from the STC Pecan campus to the event site. The buses will run approximately every 10 minutes and are wheelchair accessible. The parade itself kicks off at 6 p.m. The route is going to begin again this year here at the stadium, then run south on Bicentennial to business 83. So pencil it in on your calendar because this is something you don't want to miss. And again this year, the parade will be a star studded event. The award winning parade will feature star athletes who are key members of America's team. This year's McAllen Holiday Parade Grand Marshal is none other than Ezekiel Elliott, running back for the Dallas Cowboys. He's the lead rusher in the NFL, and as if that weren't enough, his teammate star wide receiver Cole Beasley and running back Darius Jackson are also going to be on the parade route. As Parade Grand Marshal, Elliott will lead the parade on one of the very first floats. Beasley and Jackson will also be featured on their own floats, allowing fans an opportunity to see their favorite Dallas Cowboy players throughout the parade. When you join us for the parade, the official hashtags are MHP2016, hashtag Christmas in McAllen, and hashtag Navidad in McAllen. Big things are obviously happening in the city of McAllen, including the new gem of the valley, the McAllen Performing Arts Center. The city has previewed opening plans for the four-level Performing Arts Center, and the lineup includes traveling Broadway productions of Annie the Musical, Dirty Dancing, Jersey Boys, and Elf, as well as a performance with legendary singer Tony Bennett. The state-of-the-art venue totals 93,471 square feet and seats approximately 1,800 spectators. Several events in the city of McAllen have gained international attention. The International Festivals and Events Association, or IFEA, paid tribute to the city of McAllen during their annual convention. McAllen picked up 26 IFEA awards, including 13 goals in numerous categories, including Best Full-Length TV Program for the McAllen Holiday Parade, Best Sponsor Partner for Palm Fest, and Best New Event for Quinta Mazatlan's Planta Nativa Festival. Sponsored by industry leader Haas and Wilkerson Insurance, the professional competition draws entries from among the world's top festivals and events. Winning entries came from organizations as diverse as the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona, the Pasadena Tournament of Roses, and even international contenders like the Rotterdam Festival in the Netherlands. So McAllen was in great company. The new Texas A&M campus is on a fast track to call McAllen home. Texas A&M University System Chancellor John Sharp announced that the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board has approved the establishment of a new higher education center in the Rio Grande Valley. The new center will offer coursework to complement the university's existing classes in public health and nursing, but it will also have new programs. Mayor Jim Darling stated several years ago in his first state of the city that education was very important to our community. He says we are now seeing the fruits of our labor. The new university, the new medical school, um, two major universities in Texas being here, and, and not only that, but the curriculum that's going to be developed um, really lends itself to people. The fourth thing is uh, making sure that we have opportunities for um, jobs and good paying jobs. Students at the new campus will have to meet the same admission standards as enrollees at the main campus in College Station, and they will be taught by Texas A&M University faculty. Upon graduation, they will earn Texas A&M University diplomas and even Aggie rings. Chancellor John Sharp credits his historic partnership to the city of McAllen. I mean, because the city of McAllen stepped forward and said, hey, we're going to put skin in the game. If it wouldn't have been for Mayor Darling, I'm not sure it would have been anywhere in the Rio Grande Valley. But he was the, he was the Mayor Darling is the guy that stepped forward and said, we want this for McAllen and we want this for the Rio Grande Valley. Classes are scheduled to begin in the fall of 2017 in temporary facilities. And the multi-purpose academic building is expected to open in the fall of 2018. Accreditation approvals will need to occur as degree programs are finalized. Groundbreaking for the initial building is set for December 15th. 
Additional information on the project can be found at valleyhec.tamu.edu. A new research facility will soon be located in the city of McAllen. The University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, Doctors Hospital at Renaissance Health System, and the city of McAllen celebrated the groundbreaking of a new state-of-the-art research facility designed to transform the Rio Grande Valley in terms of expanded research opportunities, improved health care, and increased economic development. The nearly 84,000 square foot facility was made possible by a unique public-private partnership between UTRGV DHR and the city of McAllen. You know, it's a $45 million structure that goes on the tax rolls, um, but more importantly, it hold, hold 300, it'll employ 330 people at least there um, once it's up and going. And those are uh, important people, those researchers. And so not only they, are they good economic from an economic development standpoint in that the wages are high there, but it's also opportunities for our students because as our, they need researchers, uh, we can home grown our own researchers. The two-story standalone building located at 2300 East Dev Avenue near the new DHR Family Medicine Center will house 16 research labs. It will also include 37 offices for faculty and staff, 12 research technician rooms, collaborative meeting rooms, and a large conference room. The construction, which will begin in December, is projected to be completed in January of 2018. McAllen Public Works and Keep McAllen Beautiful have teamed up to help McAllen schools establish a native tree incentive program. The program includes a free tree planting project where kids learn about the importance of native species. Fields Elementary kicked off the unique partnership and the students were certainly excited to be adding to the urban tree canopy on their campus. After the tree is planted, the schools are responsible for caring for the tree, so kids learn the value of stewardship and the importance of a sustainable future. It's a great way to work together to create a greener community. The city of McAllen held a sister city signing ceremony with a delegation from San Miguel de Allende. Mayor Jim Darling welcomed Mayor Ricardo Garcia from San Miguel de Allende and his delegation at the McAllen City Commission Chambers. Both mayors signed a sister city agreement. Mayor Darling, McAllen Chamber of Commerce officials and business leaders visited the beautiful vacation spot in Mexico earlier in the month. Mayor Garcia then brought his delegation to McAllen to tour some of the McAllen sites like the McAllen Convention Center, Creative Incubator and McAllen Foreign Trade Zone. That wraps up another edition of McAllen Update. Don't forget to join us on December 3rd for the McAllen Holiday Parade presented by La Plaza Mall. For the City of McAllen, I'm Roy Cantu. And I'm Roxanne Lerma. We leave you now with a look back at our McAllen Fire Cadets. They joined students at Roosevelt Elementary to help them log a mile of the McAllen Kids Marathon. Thanks so much for joining us. And they happen to be here because they want to be here with you today. They're going to talk to you about exercising, how important it is for them to, when they become firemen, they have to be in shape. Let me ask you a quick question. Who likes to run here? And who likes to exercise? Excellent. All of these gentlemen in their gray shirts are all future firefighters for the city of McAllen. And let me tell you what they do every single morning. They wake up early, they eat a real good breakfast, they come to work, and they do exercises so they can be real good at their jobs. Now we're gonna run in place a little bit, right here. Just to get the body going. Are we done? Yeah. No. All right, so let's see if we can touch our, our toes. So this morning we were invited to come out to Roosevelt Elementary and have our 14 fire cadets run with some of the students here at the school. It's part of the initiative that they have going on for the kids marathon in the city. The run was terrific. We had a beautiful day, a perfect October day to get a run in. Uh, the kids, the students were very excited to run with the cadets. The cadets in turn were really excited to come out and perform a, a community event with the students and see the excitement on the students' faces. Uh, most of the students ran faster than our cadets, uh, so we're gonna go home and work on that, but we had a real good experience out here with the students today. Five miles, five miles, all day, all day, every day. We had a real good time out here in the school today and uh, we look forward to doing more events like this into the future and inspiring the next generation of leaders of the city and uh, firefighters for our city.